Hello guys, welcome to Cloud Tech. So today we are going to discuss Capgemini Java interview questions. So the candidate has three years of experience and the skill set that he has is Java, Spring Boot, Microservices and Database. He gave two interviews, L1 and L2, and he got selected in Capgemini with a package of uh, 11 lakhs. So the topics that were covered in interview are uh, collections, uh, some of the string programs, uh, threads, Spring Boot configuration, database keys, and microservices best practices. So let's get to the Capgemini interview questions. So the first question that was asked is, what is the difference between iterator and list iterator in Java? So these are the two types of iterators by which you can traverse through the collections. So let's try to understand the differences between them. Uh, using iterator, you can only move in the forward direction, but using a list iterator, you can traverse in both the direction. That means you can go in the forward direction and you can also come back in the reverse direction. So that is list iterator. So the second point is iterators cannot be used to obtain indexes. So while traversing, if you want to get the index of the element, there is no facility in iterator to get the index of the element. But in case of list iterator, you can get the index of the element by using methods such as next index and previous index. So that is the second difference. Using iterator, you can traverse maps, list and sets. But using list iterator, you can only traverse through the list. You cannot traverse through maps and sets. So this is very important. As the name suggests, this is a list iterator. So you can only traverse through list and not other collections. Using iterator, if you try to add value to your collection, then it throws concurrent modification exception. But in case of list iterator, you can easily add value while iterating through your collection. Uh, if let's come to the last point, which is uh, there are methods like next, remove, remove, and has next are some of the methods of iterator functions. But in case of li uh, list iterator, you can move in the forward direction. Also, you can move in the reverse direction. So there are methods for next and previous, both of them. So this is very important question uh, for the interview. Uh, let's move to the next question. How to make your array list read only? So this is a, a question where they want to check uh, if you know about array list and uh, if you can make the array list read only. So you have to use a method collections dot unmodifiable list is a method uh, to which you pass your actual list, which is your sample list. And the output of this method is your unmodifiable list. So consider an example where I want to uh, create my read only array list. So what I do, I create list of string uh, equal to new array list of string. Then I try to add apple, I try to add banana, and I try to add mango. So until this point, this is a normal list. Now I want to make this list as read-only list. So what I do, collections.unmodifiable list, and I pass the list, my sample list. And then as an outcome, I get reference to the list, which is unmodifiable. That means when I try to modify this list, then I'll get unsupported operation exception. So what I do, I take read only list and try to add kiwi, uh, a fruit to this list. But this operation is not supported because my list is unmodifiable now. I cannot do any modification to this list. So this is very important question for your interview. You should be able to tell collections.unmodifiable list to make your list read only. Uh, let's move to the third question. Can we start thread twice? So generally, this question is not asked uh, in a straightforward manner. They give you a program and then they call thread.start twice. So if you see, they created a thread, thread t equal to new thread, and they started t.start, and then they again started a thread which was already started. So this is not possible in Java. It gives you illegal thread state exception. You cannot start the thread twice. So it will result in illegal thread state exception should be your answer. Let's move to the next question. <laughs> what methods thread use to communicate with each other? So generally in your program, there is not only one thread, but there are several threads. Uh, there might be multiple threads and they want to communicate with each other. They want to acquire some resources. They want to release some resources. How do they do that? They use methods like wait, notify and notify all to communicate with each other. Whenever there is a question about thread communication, you have to specify methods such as wait, notify, and notify all to acquire and to release the resources.
Uh, that's about thread communication. <coughs> this is the program which was given to the candidate. So there is a class A and there is public static void main and string args. This is the uh, starting point of my program. And then system.out.println uh, and then J plus A plus V plus A, Java. So what should be the output of this program is the question. Now there are two options. The first option is Java and the second option is something else. Now, this is a tricky question where uh, they are trying to do concatenation of characters rather than string. So if it is a if it is double quotes, then it is string. But in our case, it is single quote. So this is not string. This is a character. And they are trying to do concatenation of character. But here, what is going to happen? The Java program is going to take ASCII of J, ASCII of A, there is ASCII value, ASCII of V and ASCII of A. And it is going to sum it up. So the answer to this question is something else. It is not going to be Java. It is going to be sum of ASCII values of these characters. So the output will be sum of ASCII values of these characters. So let's move on to the next question. Can you pass list of string to a method which accepts list of object? Answer is no. So this is question related to generics. In generics, you cannot pass a list of string to a method which accepts list of objects. So let's see, uh, I have a I have a list of, with data type list of object. <coughs> I have a list with data type list of string. When I try to assign a string list to the object list, it gives me compilation error in compatible types. So in generics, everything is handled at compilation level. So whenever there's a problem of assignment, your compiler will let you know that I cannot assign this reference to a specified reference. For example, string list cannot be assigned to the object list. So you have to say list of string cannot be passed to the list of object. So that is about generic and you have to mention incompatible types. Let's move on to the next question. Uh, this is related to Spring Boot application. Oh, what is starter dependency in case of Spring Boot application? So starter dependency is a convenient way of adding dependencies to your Spring Boot application. When you add one dependency, it brings in all the transitive dependencies of this dependency. For example, consider you want to add a Spring Boot starter web. You want to write some REST APIs. In that case, what you do in your pom.xml, you add Spring Boot starter web. This is a starter dependency, which is a convenient descriptor. And one major thing that to keep in mind is you don't add version number here. Version number is specified at the parent level. So whenever you want to update, you just update the parent level version and all the starter dependencies will be automatically updated. So that is about starter web. If you want to add starter test, what you do, you just add a starter test dependency and you keep the scope as test and you don't specify the version number because as I mentioned, version number is specified at the parent level. So you have to answer starter dependency are the convenient method to add dependencies to your Spring Boot application. And it brings in all the required transitive dependencies from Maven. So that is about starter dependency in Spring Boot application. This is a very important question. How to connect to database from Spring Boot application? So I have uh, MySQL database and I want to connect my Spring Boot application to the MySQL database. So what are the steps? The first step is to add MySQL dependency. So this is MySQL dependency, uh, MySQL connector Java. So this will add uh, the dry required driver to connect from your Spring Boot application to the database. Now this is the first step. You have to add this in pom.xml. Now the next step is to um, specify the properties of your database. For example, in my application.properties, I'm going to give the URL of database. So in this case, the URL is localhost 3306 and the database name is employee. So your database can reside anywhere. So this localhost is the address of your database server. And this is the port on which your database is running. Uh, then you have to specify the username, uh, sample user, and then you have to specify the password. So this is the database user uh, and this is the database password. So the URL looks like this, jdbc colon mysql colon, the address of your database server, then the port of your uh, database or the, the port on which the database is running and the database name. 
and then finally the username and the password. So it's a two-step process. The first is to add MySQL dependency and the second is to add properties to your application.properties file. If you are using application.yaml, you can add your uh, properties to application.yaml file. So let's move on uh, to the next question. What is idempotent method according to HTTP specification? So idempotent method is the one which can be repeated safely without any side effects. For example, there is a resource on a, on a server and when you try to get that resource, so if you get that resource multiple time, there is no side effect on the server. So this is known as idempotent method. So consider post. If there's a post method and if you try to uh, call that API multiple times, so those many resources will be created. Hence, post is not idempotent. The idempotent method is the one which can be safely repeated. You can make repeated calls to that method multiple times without any side effect to the server resources. So that is idempotent method. This is very important question to uh, um, understand if you know about the REST APIs. Um, then we have what is feature branch in uh, Git. Uh, consider an example. Um, when we use Git, uh, we, every developer works on a different branch. For example, there is a team, team one, and there is a team, team two, and both the teams are working on different features. So team one is working on feature one, team two is working on feature two. Then what they will do, uh, they will create a branch with the name feature one, uh, team one will create the branch with name feature one, team two will create uh, the branch with the name feature two. And then they do their work and then finally they merge these two branches back to their master branch. So that is about the concept of feature branch in Git. So this is very important when you work in IT industry. Now, uh, how to call REST API from your Spring Boot application? So there, there is sometimes uh, the requirement where you have your own Spring Boot application, but you have to uh, call the third party uh, REST APIs from your Spring Boot application. Then there are various uh, libraries to call uh, REST APIs of third party, but REST template is one um, element or component which you can use to call the REST APIs. So that is about calling REST APIs of third party application from your Spring Boot application. So you have to specify REST template is uh, the class which we use to call uh, the REST API of third party application. Now, what is unique constraint in database? A unique constraint uh, is either a column or a set of column that uniquely define the record. For example, um, I want to specify that the names in my table should be unique. In that case, I'll uh, give unique constraint on the name column. And how to add unique constraint? You have to alter table. You have to give your uh, table name, and then you have to add constraint, and then the constraint name. Uh, and you have to define the unique uh, with your column name. So your column name will be name in this case. A unique constraint uniquely define the column in which only unique values will be present. So this is a very important question for your interview. So that's it about uh, this interview. Hope you have enjoyed. Thank you guys for watching.